<laughs> hey, welcome uh, to Happy Fun Music Time. <laughs> this did is not uh, expect that at all. We're back with episode, uh, I think, the episode eleven. Uh, I'm here with the co-host Alex Salas and uh, Austin <laughs> Dean. <Kevin. laughs> I like to start off the episode with like a little surprise, just to lighten the mood. Yeah, that was epic. It was yeah. So funny. It was, I'm trying to like overlap everybody else's voice with my laughter right now. <laughs> So uh, we're here today uh, because Austin and uh, Dan Schieme and Marissa Brunetta dropped um, Hamilton Underground Volumes 1 and 2. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about it, Austin? Yeah, I, uh, so I started a not-for-profit called Hamilton Underground, um, and I realized that nobody ever wants to give money for anything. Uh, so I was like, well, I should probably sell something. That would <laughs> True. good idea um and yeah i just had the idea of getting a a bunch of local artists to just send me a song it didn't have to be new it could have been old just to like have um like a taster of the city you know what i mean oh of all like the kind of local mm -hmm. bands local flavor yeah yeah because you know how record labels do that like they'll drop like all of their artists on one album just one song i said well yeah, yeah. what if we just did that for the city you know what i mean so I just got whoever was interested to send me a song and all the we're just collecting the proceeds now because it just came out um, but all the proceeds are I'm just gonna give them to the local venues and stuff which which venues are you thinking right now like Doris pub and, uh, yeah, and Cork the, town and yeah the first person we contacted was the kill room because I saw mm. recently that they were having a lot of trouble paying their yeah. rent um, so those are the first people that we're gonna be donating to but yeah likely Doors pub those kind of venues people yeah. who have who have helped us out you know mm -hmm. as fans how, how did you go about finding the artist was it just bands you knew or did you get referrals or anything like that that's a that's kind of where dan's part came in is i asked dan to just message everybody <laughs> <laughs> i was like dan you're you for some reason talk to every single person possible how about you just send out a mass message and see who replies <laughs> He's a social butterfly, and you got a lot. Yeah, he got a lot of responses, I guess, eh? With because uh, he filled out two volumes. Yeah, it was surprising. It was nice. Um, I wasn't expecting it, and like obviously, a couple people that I contacted came through as well. But it, it was nice to just like have all these bands that people I've never spoken to before. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I I think there's like a collective worry right now among bands about venues like bands need venues and venues need bands and this is a pretty easy way to do something at least right yeah yeah it also um it seems like it's kind of a win-win like uh you know the venues they uh they get some funding some relief and then like sort of it's a good um like kind of exposure opportunity for these bands that already have recorded songs right um they get to be in a yeah. compilation with these other bands that um so people will sort of They'll stream uh, like volumes one and two, and then they'll get to hear a bunch of bands they haven't heard before. So kind of everyone picks up. Well, exactly. Bands, that was right? kind of the main yeah. idea, right? It's a good like. It's like a taster album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it was cool. Like like Rolodex is on there. Um, it, it, or, is there a plan for a volume three or four? Or it just depends on if I keep getting tracks. Honestly, um, I do plan on eventually doing it. It's just that like. I only have like two or three tracks that came through after I had already dropped them, so I, yeah. I can't I can't guarantee it because it's like I could just have two or three tracks for months and that's not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you need. But a uh, I might do another round of just like, hey, looking for bands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, I I think a lot of bands. Like again, I think pretty much any band. Like it, it is so. I'm not sure like what what Holocore's plan is or anything, but it is really hard to figure out. Ways to monetize yourself in uh, in this COVID era with no shows, right? Yeah, our plan is to go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> That's everyone's plan. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Like we're we're literally sitting on a, on an EP, and like we figured out that we just said, okay, let's just drop it. Like we just gave up. We're like, fuck it, let's just drop it. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out when it comes out. We might do a live stream. I think the Cas was doing those listening parties. We might hit them up and ask. Oh yeah. It's like, but it's like. We kind of were just like, oh, cool, we spent all this money this year, and we're probably yeah. not making it back. Yep, it goes for, like, I, I know a lot of bands are sitting on stuff until, you know, some hypothetical end to COVID, really just holding themselves hostage to fortune, ultimately, because there's no end in sight. I mean, people are speculating 
2021, but no one actually knows. So it's uh, and plus you have material like you want to release it. It's you're excited about it. You want people to hear mm-hmm. it. It's it's a not an enviable position for anybody right now. It keeps yourself relevant too, um, like to not just like hold your music because uh, you can't tour on it or play any shows and stuff, right? Uh, at least it sort of gives you. Uh, it keeps you relevant, sort of all the people scrolling social media and all that jazz. Oh, for sure. Well, that's the one thing. It's like, at least with Holocore, we talk about a lot is like adapting. And though it's the one thing I'm like I'm glad that they're open to, where I'm just like, hey man, I'm just gonna live stream the song, like on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And like they're just like, yeah man, that sounds cool. Yeah, why not? Uh, we don't understand what the hell you're talking about, but do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, God, I mean, it's so so. You got the comp. What else is going on in in Austin's world? I mean, it, how's the solo stuff coming along? That's the thing. These like last couple of months have been so crazy for me. I'm kind of glad I got laid off because I wouldn't have had time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, so yeah, so we wrapped up the Holocore, um, and then literally two days ago, I went to Toronto and recorded like four singles for my solo stuff. Oh wow. Yeah. Where where'd you go in Toronto? Uh, I w- I'm working with a guy. Uh, his name's Connor Connor Connors. It's his like producer. <laughs> it's his <Okay>. producer name. <laughs> um, if that was his legal name, that'd be epic. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a Phillips Phillips kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a stu- He has like a studio. So I went there. Like he's like my producer for this right. for these singles. Are you doing it uh, under your own name, or are you doing it as a robot boy? I'm probably under my own name. I kind of, uh, ma- what is it, like, amalgamated? What's the word? Like, you know what I mean? I brought it all together. Like, I, there's yeah. nothing on the Robot Boy pages anymore. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude. I got that vibe. You're sort of, um, like, meshing the two things together, uh, like, from the yeah. first podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I re-released all the Robot Boy songs as an album, just called The Robot Boy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they're all on my page. It's just they're all just on it, like, under a different name. They're just called The Robot Boy Album, and all the songs are there. So how would you describe they, the are, new stuff? I yeah. talked over you. <laughs> no, no, I was I was literally going to ask the same question. So, no, okay, okay. <laughs> fair. So what was it? The, the like, what is the new stuff like? Yeah, what does your new music sound like? Um, they're actually all like all four singles are kind of a bit different, but it's like it's got like some indie pop vibes. Like it's chill. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just like little catchy tunes with some some like cool beats behind them. Are you cool. are you doing vocals on them? Yeah, yeah. It's primarily that's all I did is I just wrote the the lyrics and and I'm singing on it. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, that's cool. Because the robot bus story, yeah, the robot boy stuff was kind of the opposite. Like uh, that was you mm-hmm. wrote all the uh, like the arrangements and the instrumentals for it, and then it was uh, there was no vocals. So that's cool. Yeah, it was just like different things, right? Because it's like the first project I did with Robot Boy was just like it was just the vocals. It was just like five tracks. It didn't really go anywhere. And it's fine. I'm proud of it. I think there's like some good st- stuff on there, but it didn't go anywhere. So I was like, well, I'm producing right now. Like, what if I just drop these electronic tracks under the same thing? Like, who cares? <laughs> it's not like I have. It's not like I have fans who are gonna be upset that I'm changing direction. Like, <laughs> like dude, nobody's listening. Who cares? I'll just do whatever I want. Um, and that's why, like, even if you go on my Austin Dean Kenna page, like, it's kind of all over the place. Like, there is like. Uh, there's like two albums that are like electronic and indie pop. There's like a movie score. There's my collaboration with Colin. That's like an acoustic album, and it's like none of them sound the same. That's oh. exciting, though. I always I like that's a good variety. Thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just because like I'm again like who cares? Nobody's <laughs> nobody's listening. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, We're if I blow Austin. up, people will go back and be like, what the fuck was he doing before he got famous? <laughs> all of like, our podcast listeners, all all of the thousands of them, they'll be uh, they'll be listening to your material, Austin. Okay, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and and on, on the collab album, there's a pretty big variety of stuff too, right? I mean, it seems like there's... How did you decide how to order the songs on the, uh, on the albums? Um, I I just tried to lay it out as if it was like my own like kind of album. So I went like a bit because like all of the submissions I got were like that I had ready readily available was like rock and punk and like metal and like some like indie rock kind of vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, 
what I'll do is I'll just drop two collab albums with all of those genres on both, mm. right? Instead of having them be genre based. So you try to was spread like, out, okay, I, yeah, all the different feels on uh, like each one, but on both instead of just like having like a punk one and a and a metal one, yeah, and then having like the random indie rock guy on there and it's like well that sucks for him you know what i mean it's like you know why is he on the punk album so it's like well if i just mix everybody everywhere it's fine i just did it kind of i went like softer songs to start a bit heavier soft again and then just like the heaviest it's kind of how i did it so i was like okay like we'll we'll do a rise we'll do a bit of a fall then we'll do a climax Oh, okay, cool, cool. And then I think with the first one, it's different. I think it's the climax is like in the middle, and then the last two songs are a bit softer. Hmm, well, yeah, at least, it, I like that there's thought put into it though, because it just uh, often with collab albums, it seems very random. It's just sort of they throw yeah. everything on there. At least here, there's some kind of theme or like flow to what's going on. Well, I wanted everybody to shine, right? I didn't want somebody's like. I didn't want it. I, to, like I didn't want like an indie rock guy following the Rolodex song. Like it would just you're, be such a fucking. Switch. You're the like, climax. Like, well, Alex. Yeah. Oh a, yeah. There you go. That's pretty. <laughs> well, it's, it's the loudest song. I had to. I was like, well, I can't just put this in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I sent you the track, and you were like, I have to put a limiter. Like this is too loud. Like. <laughs> yeah. I, I put it in my DAW just to like compress it a bit. And then when I put it in my DAW, it was like all red. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey man, is it cool if I just like do a quick limiter, like just get rid of get rid of the like dog frequencies? <laughs> I should have been like, no, that's my art. How dare you? you? I mean, you could have, and I I probably would have just thrown the limiter on it and been like, whatever, man. <laughs> like, no, no, well, because it's like well, I'm switching not from have the track, before. ears get blown out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that is such a volume that's the whole spike. Point of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it it's, it sounds good. It's it, it's fun to be on there too. With you got like some good. Yeah, you know, King Park is on there. Or Hollow Core is on there. There's like good good bands on this. I'm one. not really big on track five of Volume Two. That song's kind of bad, but <laughs> it's pretty shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty garbage uh yeah no that man I, I was gonna put us as like track one and then i was like that's kind of it's like conceited right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know hey I, I don't think anybody would blame you if you made yourself the first track. yeah you did all the work here. <laughs> i definitely made us the sample track for that one like when you go on to that album if you just hit play like we're the first track that plays yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh. again, no one's gonna blame you for that. <laughs> well, there's a lot oh, of um, there's a lot of bands I haven't heard of on uh, on Volume One. Like I know the guys in King Park. I know that song, but uh, other than that, I've never heard of these guys. So I'm excited to listen to it. And then uh, Volume That's Two, cool. I think, like, yeah, I'm familiar with like half these bands. But good guys. Volume like, Two is definitely the heavier one. Yeah. of the two. Because that's mm-hmm. like. Um, that's a bunch of bands like we played with in K and A, like a lot of them. Um, yeah. Like uh, we played with the guys in Lost Arts. I think we played with Pot of Greed before, and then uh, Rat Parade and Prior Convictions. I remember those guys. Um, yeah, I don't know that. Uh, yeah, Holocaust played playing. with people on on Volume Two more than Volume One, but Volume One was like the more like rock punk one. Like I really, because like there was the odd. I had the odd like heavier track on there, but I was like, hey, it's too much of a switch. Yeah, like it's enough. like it's like it not it doesn't feel natural. Yeah. yeah. Um so that's why volume 2 is kind of just like almost all rise. Like I'm pretty sure Pot Agreed is like before uh Rolodex. Yeah. Because it's like okay, <laughs> let's just go all rise. <laughs> <laughs> Pot of Greed Pot of Greed has the greatest band name though. Like is it anything, Yu-Gi-Oh card, yeah. Oh, yeah, anything <laughs> with Yu-Gi-Oh, I I highly in uh, in K and A, did we? Um, I wanted to call a song "Summon Skull" at one point. That that got vetoed really fast. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, cool. I'll give you an ADK spoiler if you want. Sure. Ooh, sure. One of the singles that's coming out is called "The Millennial Puzzle." Hey. That's nice. <laughs> oh God, millennials! That's gonna be good. It's us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm. I'm like. Uh, I, I've heard that that the it kind of depends what scale you use. Like I, I was born in '94, so I'm either the end of the millennials or the beginning of the Gen Zs, depending on which uh, yeah which one I use. If you're younger than a boomer, you're a millennial. Mm. That's, oh, that's so you're saying all Gen Zs media. are millennials? They <laughs> must they must be. I've read news news headlines before. Everyone who's younger is a millennial. <laughs> Dirty, Even the Eidmen. <laughs> 
they're not getting married. They're not buying diamonds, and they aren't buying Harley Davidsons. Man, it's uh, they're ruining <laughs> the industries. Hey, we don't get any money, fam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a common. That the, anyone who isn't a boomer is a millennial. Very true. <laughs> it's just like an opinion. I don't understand. I really think that the name Karen is gonna like go extinct as well. Like with uh with our generation, it's got it so much. Should. It's got bad press. I feel bad for, like, people named Karen that, like, aren't Karens. <laughs> hey, man, there's exceptions to the rule. Yeah. I know, a, I know a guy named Kyle who doesn't even like Monster. Oh, fair Oh, wow, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's just an urban legend. I, I, don't, I don't believe you. Okay, well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I want to oh, um, I want to go back to the compilation for a sec, just because um, mm-hmm. I'm looking in front of me at uh, CDs that I own. Uh, among them are Big Shiny Tunes eight through ten. Uh, <laughs> great Classic. albums, great albums. Um, yeah. I the one thing that's funny about them is I have a stack of CDs here. Uh, so Big Shiny Tunes eight through ten. Um, Underclass Hero, Sum 41, uh, Hawthorne Heights, Green Day. I have a stack of them, and I've been selling them on Facebook Marketplace for $10 for all 20 albums. Not a bite. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nobody wants that. Nonsense. Nope. <laughs> but no one we, wanted them. We were talking about, like, kind of, you said you didn't want to have, like, too big of a switch between two songs on your compilation, right? Um, yeah, just because I feel like it wouldn't be fair to whoever was coming after, you know what I mean? So I want to read off uh, the first four tracks of Big Shiny Tunes 10. <laughs> so it starts with uh, My Chemical oh Romance, Helena. Uh, so after that, it goes into Coldplay, The Speed of Sound. <laughs> and then after Jesus. that, uh, The Killers, All These Things That I've Done. And then it goes into The Used, All That I've Got. Which uh, I don't know, man. In the terms of like radio rock, that uh, there's some pretty big switches there. Yeah, they, they definitely didn't plan that out. I, I I think that goes to my point about most compilation albums just being thrown together. I, there, are, you know what? Or yeah, I have a, here here's a theory. I'll throw this one out there. Yeah. Maybe certain bands pay. You know how in grocery stores you can pay to be put on the middle shelf because it's at eye level. Maybe <laughs> maybe maybe certain bands pay for like I want track two. So Coldplay like shelled out a bunch of money to the second they got track too. I know a lot yeah. of the time they just do it by who's like the most famous band is well, like Holocore the first couple people. Their track five yeah. on uh, the Hamilton Underground Volume Two. So that's a- <laughs> yeah, we could only afford track five though. <laughs> we we couldn't afford any higher than that. Uh, that is yeah. The big shiny tunes is uh, is interesting though. They haven't put one out right. It's that series is done. I don't know. Let's, um, I'm, I'm in front well, of all those computer. bands are probably in jail for uh, being pedophiles, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of hard to drop albums, you know. Yeah, but they could have new bands. They could have uh, Hollow Core and King Park, Big Shiny Tunes, Eleven. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be cool with that. <laughs> I would actually yeah, go and search uh, that, but uh, my internet's out. I uh, we're running oh, really? this episode on Data Boys. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! What? Okay, here I'll I'll Google it. <laughs> Recording on Data right now? Uh, well, I'm just in the call on Data and Cubase. Like, I don't need internet for Cubase, right? Yeah, yeah, but your uh, your internet is out. Wow. For okay, wow. For what's happening at your house? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's everything just turned off when I was like about to call you guys. It was kind of spooky. Yeah, that's a, that. Yeah. They didn't There's a peek the behind the curtain. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with this giant gash in my hand and the uh, summoning circle underneath me? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I if you aware. Did that to fuck me over? <laughs> then like. <laughs> yeah. That. Okay. I'm. I'm googling this now. Um, yeah. How far did so Big Shiny la- Tunes go? Yeah. So the last one is Big Shiny Tunes 14 from 2009, and. Uh, if for interest's sake, here's the first few songs on that one. You got "Know Your Enemy" from Green Day. Okay. You've you've got "Audience of One" from Rise Against. Okay. Then you, then you've got "Too Many Rappers," Beastie Boys featuring Nas. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have "Rusted from the Rain," Billy Talent, and it goes on. You got your Nickelbacks, Mariana's Trench, Shine Down. Wait, Cedar. I have a question. Wait, neither the Beastie Boys nor Nas are Canadian. 
Well, there's a there's a good question. Neither is Green Day, for that matter. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think the Canadian thing kind of fell by the wayside when they were like, wait, American bands make money. Yeah, but they have they have Nickelback <laughs> and Billy Talent on there, and Mariana's Trench. Like... Uh, token Canadians, token Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> what else do they got on there? Because there's a lot of parallels to Volume 10. Oh, on, on 14? Okay, yeah. they have, uh, you got The Used, Blood on My Hands. You okay. have Die Mannequin. With Bad Medicine, you've got Our Lady Peace, the Arkells are on this one, uh, Default is on here, Paramore, All American Rejects, Alexis on Fire, of course, the Young Cardinals. Wow. And yeah, this I is... can guarantee that the All American Rejects are not Canadian. <laughs> so <laughs> this Batman. um, Volume Ten, like the one I'm looking at here, has MCR, it has the Used, it has Nickelback, it has Seether, it has Billy Talent. It has Alexis <laughs> on fire. Like it's like all the same bands. That's wild. They just recycled it and they added a couple. They're like, oh, Alexis on fire is pretty popular right now. Yeah, and for fun, here here's another interesting fact. Alexis on fire appeared on all three of the eleven. Or actually, no, they were on eleven. They were on twelve. They're on ten. And they were on fourteen. <laughs> they're on ten I mean, through fourteen. Yeah. Well, they're like. They're like Canada's like go-to metalcore band, right? Or like post-hardcore, or whatever the fucking genres are. Yeah, yeah. Alexis on Fire is. Uh... <laughs> well, it's like the go-to, right? Because it's like I don't, I can't like off the top of my head be like who's more popular that's in that genre in Canada. You got yeah. No, they are definitely really the, the talent big fit protest, but for post-hardcore, like maybe Silverstein, but I still think Alexis is bigger. Yeah, not in two thousand nine. Yeah. Like maybe not Silverstein, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, Billy Talent is definitely one of like the biggest bands of that like, of those vibes of like alt kids, you know. <laughs> oh. But I, I also think that City and Color really kind of helped Alexis on Fire, um, like the whole Dallas Green solo thing. The yeah, their mainstream appeal for sure. Yeah, well that that brought a lot of ears onto them. Yeah. Dallas it Green wouldn't have Soy Boy side think. project. Well, like Crisis and uh, Young. Young Cardinals, like Old Crow's Young Cardinals, are are more radio friendly as well. Yeah. That's oh true. yeah. Like yeah. there's still still some fucking bangers on there. Uh, but like definitely, they're doing less. Like you need to be high to appreciate it. Music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I'm talking about. Like yeah, the first album is very much like hard to listen to sober. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the well, first it, Alexis it, album. Like it. Uh... I, that, I think Watch Out is my favorite Alexis, if I had to pick out of all Watch of them. Out is pretty great. That, yeah, that, that's a classic one. Yeah. I just feel like to like sit down or to just like casually put something on, I just feel like Crisis and Old Crows is like it's so much easier to just casually put on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, it, it's interesting. I think Alexis, they, they kind of mirror System of a Down in an interesting way in that they started out much more... Um, uh, hardcore, much more kind of niche, and then as they became more popular, they kind of managed to, to maintain the fundamental sound without, um, like they didn't compromise too much, but they managed to introduce just enough pop stuff to kind of grow the audience and not lose who they had. That's a, not an easy thing to do either. Yeah, they both well, it's important. Pretty like, crazy. as much as people are like, a fucking bunch of sellouts, it's like, yeah, but like, they need their they need their reach to be bigger. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's their job. It's like your yeah. favorite band is writing all these like very mindful, conscious like lyrics that you think everyone should hear, but then when everyone starts to hear them, you're mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a certain maturity that happens, I think, as as the band, uh, band the, the the band gets bigger and they kind of. Uh, yeah, they they want to they want to grow their audience, and so there's some necessity there as well. Um, or or a band can move in the other direction where they become more and more kind of uh, more and more more niche and more um, parochial as they as they age, which is the rarer rarer route, right? But um, no, I think Alexis on Fire have done a, a really good job with that. Like a system of down, like uh, like a thrice. There's another one. Um, yeah. Mr. Trying to, John, try to think of uh, like a band. Like, what, what's a band that got weirder with time? You could think <sighs> Muse, maybe. Uh, Muse, I think, actually got way poppier. That would be my my take on Muse. I, I think, uh, I think, to a degree, you could put radio. Speaking of Muse, S bands, Radiohead, kind of have gone that route as yeah, of late. From um, Pablo Honey, like. 
the, well, be- for, yeah. the Beatles. The Beatles, the Beatles got, definitely yeah. got weirder yeah, the longer the, they got along. The Beatles are a good example, yeah, for sure, the Beatles. Um, I mean, the classic one is over, but they were always super underground anyway, and they've done a whole bunch of weird stuff. Um, Holocore. Yeah. <laughs> holocore. <laughs> we're gonna. We're just gonna do the wild shit. I want to hear the holocore yeah. jazz pop album. That's that's coming out next year. That's what I'm just calling. Yeah. It okay. Right now. Oh, please yeah. tell me you're gonna do a jazz pop album with holocore. <laughs> That'd be pretty epic. <laughs> That'd be so good. We're already so, like, like naming shit after puns like... and stuff, so we might as well. <laughs> what well, what play band that you music, to? son? Like... Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, go no, on. What, what did you say? I'm just being a, a fuck. Like, <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I was going to say, Austin, what, what kind of bands are, are you listening to these days? Uh, bands these days. Well, I'm going to open up the spoofy and see <laughs> what uh, my recent listens are. Because there's a lot. Um, yeah. To be honest... I have been I've been really into like play just like playlists. Like I'll just throw on a playlist and just be like cool with it. Okay. Um one of them I've been listening to is called Future Funk. Ooh, okay. And it's uh it's all just like uh just like neo style like funk music. It's great. Oh nice. Oh I like that. What kind it's of like bands futuristic. are on that? Oh fuck, I don't even know their names. I just know there's a couple there's a bunch that just have like Sailor Moon as their fucking photos. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, man, aesthetic. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, band-wise, though, I've been listening to um, the new... I listened to the new Unleash the Archers album a couple mm. times. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just trying to fucking remember who all, <laughs> who all I've been listening to. Because, again, like, I've just been throwing on music. I'm hyped for the new uh, Gojira album to come out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't one. know that was coming out. That's cool. Well, I mean, they dropped a single recently, so maybe they're maybe they don't have an album. Maybe I'm just wrong. But <laughs> like, well, yeah, I'm not sure if it's an album or just a single. But uh, yeah, yeah, Gojira dropping stuff. Deftones dropped a new song. Did you hear that one? Oh, no. that was pretty good. I don't really listen to Deftones that much. Mm. I heard. I, I, I remember Dan was a fan. So. Hmm. Um. But yeah, there's like uh, there's a bunch of different uh, bands that I just like recently have uh, gotten into. I was listening to the the Brothers of Metal album until it came out. Metal Brothers. <laughs> metal Brothers. I'm those. Yeah, you should. The um, Brothers of Metal. Yeah, Austin. Uh, if you like Brothers of Metal, you should check out uh, Metal Brothers. I'll send you a link. <laughs> Just as good, eh? <laughs> yeah. No, I I I think the Metal Brothers are superior, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Really. I wish. Like... Hey, but the Brothers of Metal also have a a sister of metal. <laughs> Do the Metal Brothers have uh, gender inclusivity or no? <laughs> Not oh, that no. I know of. The sister well, just comes downstairs and says, "Stop making that racket!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't appreciate them living in the Stone Age. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but you'll love their guitar solo though when you hear it. Oh, true. All right. Oh, yo, Austin. Um, if I send you like a, a JPEG, are you able to look at it? Yeah, I probably. Okay. <laughs> I just yeah. want you to look at the Metal Brothers album cover. I'm going to just post I'll it in the shot. I'll look at it on my phone. Are you going to put it up on screen when you upload this? This yeah, is pretty sure. great. Metal yeah, Brothers. Man. Yes, there it is. <laughs> These guys are great. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but put this in the video when you post. It'll, yeah, it'll, it'll just be right put it up there. there. Great album. But yeah, I've just been listening to a lot of playlists. Future Funk, Vaporwave. I really got into Vaporwave recently. <laughs> oh, okay. Like Simpsons Vaporwave? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I've just been really into like vibe music. That's cool. You know? No, yeah, yeah, that is cool. Um, funk is, yeah. I'm funk. I want to get more into funk. I mean, I really kind of only know like funkadelic and like the more classic funk stuff. This new funk stuff, I'm not uh, overly familiar with. Future funk. It's a playlist made by Spotify. It's called Future Funk. I'll have to check that out today. It's very, uh, it's very up my alley because I'm a huge weeb. So it's like there's all these like <laughs> there's all these anime samples in them, and because it's all supposed to be like neo stuff, you know what I mean? Like neo Tokyo, right. like music and shit like that. Well, that's like um, like Persona Four and Five. That like that kind of music. That's what I think of when I think of like anime Future Funk. Oh really? <laughs> I haven't played them. But, oh I mean, true. Yeah, really all their music, their soundtracks are just like hella funky. I I know the Persona tracks from the new Smash Brothers game are pretty fire. So. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Oh man, that, that, that's cool though. That you you listen to stuff that I wouldn't expect the singer of of a rock band to to listen to. I know you have your solo stuff, but I mean, I I know you primarily from Holocore, and I mm-hmm. I wouldn't think you would listen to Vaporwave and funk and this. So that, that's really interesting. Hey man, good music is good music, you know. And it's like if I feel a vibe with it, I fuck with it. That's our motto. Good music is good music. Yeah, it doesn't matter what genre it's in. Um, it's mm-hmm. just that I've just been I've just been vibing recently, so that's the, that's what I've been listening to. Nice, nice. <laughs> I haven't. Oh, uh, man. I was like, there's listening a great to, playlist um... called Epic and Melodic, and oh, yeah? it's called Epic and Melodic Metal for the Dragon Slayer in you. <laughs> is it like power metal? So dr- <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, power metal. So is like Dragon Force on there? Yeah, it's like Unleash the Archers and uh, Unleash the Archers and like Power Wolf and like Glory <laughs> Hammer and. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, All I went through. Um, I went through like a phase. Like I used to fucking love Dragon Force when. Um, I was like kind of early teens, and then like I had a phase where I fucking hated Dragon Force, and like now I'm kind of in between. Like I like them sometimes I, in small doses. I don't listen to a lot of Dragon Force. I do fuck with a lot of like symphonic metal and power metal. Fair though. enough. I, I'm just like a big. I love fantasy stuff. I got so more into like, it nowadays. Mm-hmm. I'm just really into it because I, I don't know. That's just the shit I loved when I was a kid. It was like dragons and magic and shit. Mm. So like yeah, the yeah. idea of that in music, and just like oh, this is epic. For nerds. Yeah, the key is. Oh, sorry. I I just said it was for nerds, but I'm just oh. being an <laughs> asshole. It's true. I was pretty much yeah. Let me. I I think I think the thing with Dragon Force is like I too really hated them for a phase, and I I guess the the key is just not to take it too seriously. At the end of the day, like they're obviously not taking it seriously when they're getting drunk on stage and, and no. Uh, Extreme you know. power metal is the anthem of a nation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their newest album. Oh God! And yeah, the, the, I haven't actually really given them any proper listen since they got rid of ZP Theert. Like I heard a couple <laughs> of tracks with the new singer, but I think he's better. Um, the, the, the new album is deadly, actually. Hmm. I have to throw that on after the Future Funk. It's one of my. It's uh, the first one that I liked since like the old school, like 2008. <laughs> it's the first one that I thought was like, this is great. <laughs> I think I think through the fire and flames also annoyed me because it was so overplayed and it was like mm-hmm. the the you know amateur guitar players go to like this song is so hard. Fury of the, Fury of the Storm is a better track. That's yeah, true. Fury of the Storm was I would agree actually better. Um, <laughs> so was Body Breakdown. And also the, I, I, the, sorry, Body Breakdown was also better. I was mm-hmm. just gonna say that Body Breakdown with <laughs> was it Re- was Revolution up. Death Squad or something like that? You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. What that was a great track? I think that's all of their songs. All of their songs go like that. Or yeah, and all the songs have day and way that that rhyme every single time. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, power metal, classic power metal. But you're not big into metal, you said, right? The last time we did this. There's like, it's just a. There's a lot of like, it's sometimes it's just bad vibes, you know. <laughs> so, like sometimes it's just like, the song is just about like, skin. I hate my dad and I want to kill everyone around me, and I'm just like, I don't really feel that way today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a lot of pop punk too, to be fair. I agree. I, I like I like a fair, some pop punk bands, but most of it, I'm just like, eh, you know, I don't, I don't really hate my ex girlfriend that much. <laughs> what um, you know what I hate? Um, like sort of this like newer wave of metalcore that like, it's just like alt metal, but it has like a Linkin Park chorus in every song. Like, I can't really vibe yeah, it's, with that. It's frustrating. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, there are there there are some local bands who do that who are not too great. Whoa! Um, yeah, yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah, like Dolodex Rarco. Oh God, that band sucks. <laughs> Do- Dolodex Rarco. Yeah, yeah, that band's so awful. God, Jesus. <laughs> um, but <laughs> no, I'm just saying that I think that yeah, that commercial kind of like neutered form of metalcore. Where it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna appeal to the heavy fans. We got some rock and verses with screams, and then, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? You can love it too on the radio. We got a real banger of a catchy chorus with like synths behind it, 
It's just so patently. <laughs> and I think it like, appeals like, to nobody because of that. It's <laughs> exactly. It's That's too heavy for a radio listener and uh, people that want to hear riffs. It uh, it's too soft. Like I call that the hollow core dilemma. <laughs> where you're too soft for metal fans and you're too and you're too heavy for for rock fans. <laughs> well, no, your music's oh, yeah. actually fun though. Like, I, I would rather. That's what we try that. to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. You guys well, sound and, like you're and, enjoying and, yourself. Yeah. And oh, sorry. I think were you talking? Mm. I just said. I, I, um, I, I, I could not hear you. <laughs> oh, am I like really quiet? Is this like last Kinda episode? Big. It's a bit quiet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn myself up a little bit. Um, I was just saying that, uh, like, you guys sound like you're enjoying yourself, and I actually, like, I can engage with the music, like, uh, sort of, I'm talking about bands like, like, the Amity Affliction, um, <laughs> the Word Alive, sort of, like, bands that are just, I don't know, it sounds really, like, they're bored, and it sounds really passe, I don't really, I yeah, don't know how to they just wrote it. down what would do, six, what would do well, and they did it, and then that was their entire band, it's like, and that's the one thing, it's like, I don't mind people, like, maybe there being like a divisiveness to hollow core of like if it's metal or not yeah. i don't mind that because like we're not actually trying to do anything specific like, we're just writing songs uh, yeah it's natural so it's, yeah it's, it's like the songs come out how they come out and if people want to say it's metal they can say it's metal and if they want to say it's fucking indie pop because it's pussy soft shit then whatever like <laughs> i guess we're indie pop i don't care <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, yeah and and that, that that's the secret right there's um there's a Northrop Fry quote about the uh, how the best art always it, it, it severs its own navel strings and it's in the feeding tubes of its own of its own ego, um, basically meaning that if, if you are creating with the intention of 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 feeding your own desire for something outside of the work, right, for your own fame, or if you're like we were just saying, trying to appease multiple crowds in order to kind of whatever your whatever your Motive may be outside of uh, creating something worthwhile. Ultimately, it's it's going to become meaningless um, because you can the, the the critical mind can read into that and see the the falsity of it. Um, and so, I think the good thing about you guys is that it's obviously you're having fun doing it. Um, it Bro, who's the most popular guy in the world? I'm sorry for interrupting you. Who's the most popular person in the world? That's phone keeps going on. That's not me. I'm on silent. <laughs> it might be me. Let me check. <laughs> it's like every ten seconds uh, I hear the da ding. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me. Sorry. Okay, I'm not turning it on. I'm silent. No, it's okay. Uh, it's just sorry. like while you were talking, it was happening. I'm just like, am I supposed I'm to be paying too... attention to this dude? Like... <laughs> well, he's giving I'm you the most thoughtful compliment, right now, Austin. Sorry. Like, <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I appreciate I'm, I'm, it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I was trying to be so nice. <laughs> No, continue, continue uh, inflating my ego. I just wanted to let you know that that was distracting me, and I couldn't appreciate your uh, thoughtful comments. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, sorry. Now I'm kind of taking a seat. Why my phone was just blowing up? Um, okay, there's that. Anyway, so somebody else talk for like two seconds. I have nothing more to add. <laughs> uh, he's, he's too popular for the podcast. Jeez. Yeah. How to be the no, how to be the worst well, guest on a podcast ever? Just call out the fucking people interviewing you. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is. Part of it is my freaking. I just moved to London, and so I'm like, oh I'm, shit, I'm doing this on my laptop. Uh, using like, I, I brought my mic because I'm doing this podcast, so it's like I'm holding it. I'm like, this is such a like I'm in like an empty room right now. Oh it's gosh. like a very like uh, very. I I, I was uh, not thinking clearly when I was preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to turn my phone off. I'm like, you know, it was like a million, million things going on. But anyway, my my point was, Hollow Core is sick, and you should be very happy. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Uh, well, I was gonna ask, um, you guys, uh, you're offering the uh, like a hard copy of the album, like CDs. How many of those did? Uh, how many did you get made? Like, what was the idea behind that? For the compilations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're just being made to order, basically. Oh, okay. Cool, so, cool. like, I just do them uh, by like weekly or biweekly. So I basically collect a bunch of the orders and then we print them and then they get shipped. Oh, nice. Um, not, like, I don't know. If it gets like really insane, then we'll probably have to start pre-buying. But at the moment, it's not anything crazy. Oh, fair like, enough. Will you sign them? Yeah. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I mean, maybe I, if anyone wanted me to, I don't. Maybe I'd like you to sign my copy, man. 
Oh, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Nice. Um, there was one thing I did want to add to your uh, comment there uh, about like the just bands being kind of like formulaic about their music. The, it, there comes to a point as well, like where you have to know how to do that stuff, but you shouldn't be doing that when you're writing the song. That that should just be pre-production. You know what I mean? Right. Like like you can write like for instance like Hollowcore had a song that was like six minutes long, and it was a good song. But we stopped like playing it. Like we didn't like playing it because it wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? And then it was like, okay, well, let's not maybe play it. Like let's not put it on the EP because it's not our best song. It's probably our worst song. Yeah. Right. And we did a bun, a bit of pre-production to like make it more radio friendly, to make it shorter, to cut out parts that were unnecessary. And now I love the song. Mm-hmm. So it, just, it flows better. We didn't write the song for the radio you know what i mean we wrote the song in its entirety and we after we wrote it we're like okay let's you know let's try to make this better like let's try to make it to the best of its ability oh, there's yeah, something yeah. to be said about that like there's something to be said about people who can write a song and then like you can adapt what you've written to like market because there is an issue with people who think that they are the greatest artists in the world and that everything they make is is genius and the moment that it sorts to be uh, starts to become a little bit mainstream it's like garbage like oh, there's yeah. a, there's such an issue with people like that as well so it's like you know you have to you have to pick your battles yeah it's oh um, for sure you have to be critical of yourself and i think uh yeah that's a big part you definitely of shouldn't go into it like you shouldn't write songs to be popular like just write the song and then try to make it popular <laughs> yeah make it as good as you can <laughs> yeah. but still like an honest expression well, right for sure, yeah. You don't want to destroy what you've done. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, or you can write songs to just be popular, but that's all it's going to be. You're going to be a, a crazy frog, and you're <laughs> going to have something that's, that's you know, created for a purpose that has no, nothing to do with, with any artistic merit. And is there something wrong with that? Not not really, but it's not what I'm interested in, in talking about, right? Yeah, why why a, are you hating on crazy a, frog, man? Yeah. <laughs> Axel F, man. He's a DJ genius, bro. Yeah. Guy revolutionized electronic music. <laughs> he was just the guy, he was just the one that popped into my head. I, there's a lot of different examples, but um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to say about that, because there, there is like, there's something to be said about both. It's like, you, be as artistic as you want, but you also have to be smart. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. Like, you can't just like, I don't know. You can't be too full of yourself and being like, no, what I wrote is like the only way that this can be made. And it's like, okay, man, you can do that, but you're going to alienate a lot of people and yeah. you're, you're going to take a lot of things personally when they don't, you know, yeah. explode the way you think they will. This is my 25 mm -hmm. minute jazz odyssey and it's going to be the next stairway to heaven. Like that's, that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hey, you know, you could cut out 10 minutes of this and it would still be a good song. No. It needs those ten minutes just of like uh, me whale noodling noises. Things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's symbolic. The whale. <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, I, I look forward to the next collab album. Where, hey, if you want, uh, I will send you a twenty-five minute whale noise song. You can throw it at the end of the album. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll consider it. <laughs> we should do. Um, we should do an exclusive podcast episode that's only on the compilation. <laughs> yeah, okay. we could. <laughs> That's what this could be. There you go. <laughs> you guys got to call every single band that's on it and interview them for like 10 minutes yeah. and then and then cut it together into one podcast. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a review <laughs> of all of, the other tracks that are on it. Yeah, that's actually kind of a cool idea. I like the idea of like a, a collab podcast album. That's like, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, you know, they, these kind of things, they just come to me. I wouldn't say I'm a genius. You could, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, uh, we we know you're a genius, Austin. I mean, yeah. come on. Oh wow, well, you know I wasn't fishing for that, but you could. <laughs> you could I think say. the fact that you've done our you've done our podcast twice that shows yeah. very good judgment. Yeah, you've been yeah. on the podcast the uh, the most times, man. That uh, we we value your intellect uh, and your insight. <laughs> <laughs> just, just gas me up for no reason, <laughs> even though, even though I'm, I'm probably one of the worst fucking guests because I always just. Station. No, <laughs> no the, the the worst death are the ones who don't talk. That is the worst. Yeah, I, you know, there's like this void of horror that we have to fill, and we're right. just sitting here like, okay, you've given us a one-word answer. 
next question, and like eight minutes have passed, and we got nothing yeah. else to say. That's the worst. This is miles better than um, that episode with uh, with uh, Dan Schieme and uh, Colin. That like, that was a horrible <laughs> episode. That, it was by far my least favorite. I yeah. I mean, I didn't listen to it. it sounded yeah. like shit, sounded like shit guests. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you saw the no. names, you just skipped that one. You I got I think I did listen to that. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna listen to this too. Me, like just so offended by that comment. No, I, I've said much worse <laughs> in in person. Yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> he he takes a lot of emotional abuse. Mm. He does. I was, talking, I was talking about this with somebody the other day about how like I was like I wonder if um like I wonder if like Holocord did blow up like what people would think of of us because we kind of just like say shit and like and we're not like bad dudes but like we just like don't, uh, I, we don't, like don't give a fuck <laughs> but we're also not like i don't know we're not trying to be like edgy in any way so it's like i don't feel like anyone's gonna like us because the people who are really edgy are gonna be like these guys are soft and then the people who are like normal people are gonna be like these guys are assholes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well you know you can't control other people's opinions so they can think what they want and I will continue enjoying Holocore. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, any, anything else about the you want to plug here, the collab album, uh, upcoming Holocore stuff, anything else we should know about? Um, I mean, yeah, like the collab album's out now. It would be great if people bought it because, like, again, all the money is going to venues. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, that's like there's a donation button on there as well, so if you just have cash lying around, you know, you get those big EI checks. You know. <laughs> What's the website people can go to? It's all on the band. It's all on Bandcamp. Okay. I have it all set up on the merch area and there. Is it HamiltonUnderground.Bandcamp.com or something like yeah, that? Yeah, everything is just Hamilton Underground. I don't know how, but yeah. nobody ha- nobody had that name. It's actually, a great name. Yeah, I don't know how nobody t- nobody took it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that that is no, another example of your genius right there. Even when I was registering the business, I I did like a proper business registry search and no, it, no results. No, I like it, man. Yeah, I'm a customer. This is uh, yeah. good stuff. I like the album Thanks, covers, man. Oh, and man. Uh, it's you. oh, the album covers are done by a friend of mine. His name is Marshall Murphy. He's like a photographer, videographer. All right, yeah. shout out Marshall. He took those photos. Yeah, shout out to Marshall. And I guess yeah, the Hollow Core EP comes out around Halloween. Fun, fun. Gonna be on the lookout for that. Halloween. Yeah. Look out, Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a that's a mar- marketing uh, perfection right there. Yeah, Halloween. That's when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you guys oh, gonna um, well, uh, do a live stream thanks for, for talking to us, Austin? Uh, Cross, you have any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Are you guys uh, are you guys gonna do like a, a live playthrough of the EP? I don't know. I, the, like, we would love to, but I don't think we have the equipment to do that. <laughs> like, oh, fair enough. Uh, but we might do a live stream of the EP, like before it comes out, just Sounds like nice. a listening party, like a radio show. Mm. Oh, I will be there. Thanks, man. Has it worked well for the single release? And I think it'll be cool if I have the whole album to just play. Yeah, the whole EP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Single sounded good. Video was uh, video was cool too. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. Uh, uh, Thanks again, Austin, for, for talking. Yeah, yeah, of course. Our favorite cats. Oh yeah. I love being on. I get to I get to be a rude guest to Alex and uh, he just <laughs> accepts it. <laughs> that applies to both of us. <laughs> Last time we completely ignored you, Crossy, and mm-hmm. this time I was like, yo, bro, turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got both of us. <laughs> yeah, but both Alex is getting destroyed. We'll have to do yeah. um, like a different combination. We'll have to uh, we'll have to get like you and Dan on, or you and Colin. Like, um, so we got. All I don't want to be anywhere near Dan, so don't. <laughs> do that. <laughs> I want to get all the different combinations of you guys on the show. <laughs> Except on the uh, Hollow Core albums, you'll be near, near Dan on those. No, yeah. I go into a private room, <laughs> private <laughs> vocal room with only red M and M's in my bowl. Uh, and oh. <laughs> Dan sorts them for you. Classic. Free Perrier everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. Well, well thank, thank you for you, coming Austin. on. I've got to head out. Thank you, Austin. Thanks, man. All right. Bye.